Hey everyone, so here's the less than two minute news flash from the world of Kekistan. At the funeral of his father, Roger Ailes, Zachary, his son, issued this warning to the sex assault accusers of his father. I want all the people who betrayed my father to know that I'm coming after them and hell is coming with me. Whoa. All right, so I'm Diana Davison, and today I want to talk about Canadian Judge Pepe, otherwise known as Jerry Le Grandeur. We'll get to him in a moment, but you need a little background first. So in Canada, we don't have protections against double jeopardy, so you can be acquitted of a crime and find yourself back in court again. I'm just going to pause for a second so all my American friends can freak the fuck out. Okay. Disappointed! So yeah, you can be acquitted, and the Crown, who's represented by the Lizard Queen, can appeal the acquittal and force you back into trial again. So the problem with this, why am I even having to explain what the problem is with a double jeopardy violation? Um, let's just go to the reason why a loophole was created in Commonwealth countries. Basically, there were unpopular verdicts, and so a loophole was created where in serious accusations, so murder, rape, or armed robbery, that the Crown can appeal the, the acquittal and basically say, shit, let's give this another try and see if we can get it right this time. But it's supposed to be very difficult for the state or the Crown <laughs> in Commonwealth countries to acquire this overturning of an acquittal. Mm, not so much anymore. So this is where Judge Pepe comes in. In a case called R versus Wagar, a transient kid was falsely accused of sexual assault after Alexander Wegar's brother started mocking the girl and calling her a slut for having sex with Alex instead of him. Well, Alex was found not guilty, in part because the accuser told another girl that she intended on having sex with Alex, and so the other girl left the two of them alone. That's why they were even alone in the first place, and we had a witness who was able to testify to that. But a new trial was ordered based on the wording that the judge used in parts of his verdict. All of Canada was in an outrage. The accuser, who was obviously lying, was aggrandized as a survivor twice done wrong. So Alexander Wagar had to go back to jail again waiting for a second trial even though he was acquitted, and magic, he was acquitted again because the evidence against him sucked. But the public pressure was immense. They had to bring in a judge from out of province or from a different district, actually. I think he was in the same province. But they bring in Judge Pepe from out of province, and he's a you know, fairly experienced judge. And what I want to talk to you about is what Judge Pepe said at the end, which is what makes him the messenger of Keck. Final comments. Before I conclude, I wish to make a final comment concerning the case. This matter has drawn much public interest from the community as a whole, rightly so, given the comments of the trial judge during the first trial proceeding. There has been deserved sympathy engendered for the complainant from the community as a consequence of what was said and the fact that she's been required to publicly describe these difficult events a second time. The trial judge, and consequently the court, and the administration of justice have been criticized by some segments of society and many have asserted that the complainant has suffered an injustice by the manner in which the court process unfolded in the first trial in this case. I take no issue with any of those concerns. Here's the great part. However, none of those considerations mean that the case now before this court can be proven by evidence of a lesser quality and weight, and none of those things mean that evidence is to be scrutinized to a lower standard than is required in all criminal matters, and none of those factors change the presumption of innocence and the duty of the Crown to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. As I have indicated aforesaid, that requirement was not met by the Crown in this case, thus the accused's acquittal. Now I know some of you are thinking, well, Judge Pepe would have just said, dude's innocent, suck my massive green dick, but there are some codes of conduct in the courtroom and in Canada, the Crown can appeal every single trial again, so he didn't want this poor guy to have to go through trial number three, which Crown threatened to do. 
Because the Lizard Queen, whose name rhymes with Regina, is apparently a complete cunt. Now there's another dude who got caught up in this nightmare social justice war on the legal system who hails from the same province of Alberta. His name's Alan Dean Griffin. Now, Mr. Griffin was acquitted of historical sexual assault accusations for a number of reasons, but some of those reasons were poorly worded, so the acquittal was overturned. But this time, the second judge convicted. The second judge apparently caved to political pressure. I've read the original verdict, and you could take out all of the grounds of appeal and still end up with an acquittal. All of the accusations magically appeared exactly when Mr. Griffin was engaged in a custody dispute with his ex. Hmm, no motive there. Now, I'd be cool if Judge Yamachi, in this case, had just plainly acquitted on the grounds that Crown sucks balls for trying this case in a court of law in the first place. So how easy is it for an acquittal to be overturned, and how much power do judges have against ideologues putting political pressure on them? None. The CJC, Canadian Judicial Council, just told Canadian Parliament that a new bill seeking to educate judges on how to convict more people of sexual assault was unconstitutional. The result? The bill got fast-tracked and was passed into law within a week. Yay! So, Canadian government just passed a bill, 337, into law which they know to be unconstitutional. Yay, progress. So, Canada, what you gonna do? The government can now just retry you after acquittal based on nothing more than a poor word choice by the judge. Your lawyer puts forth a good defense. Doesn't matter, it's all about what words the judge uses when they acquit you. And the people making these rules don't even care if it violates the Constitution. If you're accused of sexual assault in Canada, now... If you're acquitted, they'll just keep taking you back to court over and over again until they get the verdict the ideologues want. Because Canada is afraid of women with signs. Whoa.